Hi, I'm Steven. On this final day of December and final day of 2022, uh, let me talk about my favorite movies of 2022. Now, it's all subjective. Everybody has their own taste in movies. Everybody has their own opinion. I don't necessarily go by box office dollars. I go by what I liked and what I moved me. And there were some failures this year. Uh, starting with those, I liked Bullet Train with Brad Pitt, but I won't say it was one of my favorite movies of the year. Uh, Amsterdam was supposed to be huge, and it failed. Uh, Babylon was supposed to be huge, and it failed. And then you had things that were just kind of laughing stocks, like Black Adam and Morbius, which, uh, poor Jared Leto, I wish he would get the right superhero script. I think he would have been a good Joker if he was given a better script, and I think Morbius could have been a good movie had they not um, destroyed it after the fact and tore it all up because, well, plans change and unfortunately that movie was made while plans were changing. But anyway, uh, let's get into what I did like this year. Starting things off at number five, Will Smith uh, had a rough year. I think if he could go back and redo 2022, maybe he would or maybe he wouldn't because he learned from it. And, you know, I don't hate Will because of the slap heard around the world. Uh, I think he's got a great body of work. Him uh, hitting Chris Rock hasn't changed that. Did I think that was the right thing to do? No, but I'm also a believer in the fact that we are all human and we all are one moment away from doing something that we might come to regret. Some things are worse than others and some of us have higher breaking points than others do. So that one moment is different for everybody and I think Will was just a guy who'd had enough and had a bad day and shouldn't be condemned forever for it. So he released a movie on Apple Plus called Emancipation. It is loosely, and I stress the word loosely, based off a true story about a slave who escaped freedom. What I liked about it, uh, it is action-packed. They do kind of sway, try to stay away from the historical side as far as accuracy goes, uh, but it really showcases Will as an actor, and that dude has come such a long way from the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. He can be funny, uh, he can be cool like in Hitch, uh, you've got the Bad Boys franchise that he's a part of, and he can act. He's got some good acting chops, so much props and much love to Will Smith for Emancipation. It was number five. When it comes to number four, it was a good year for superhero movies. There was some stuff that I really liked a lot. I was a big fan of Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. Do I call it in my top five? No. Thor was a little bit of a disappointment. Um, but there were a couple of good superhero movies out there. One of them being Wakanda Forever. Now, this didn't quite do what the original Black Panther did. But I give them a lot of credit because there was a completely different script written with Chadwick Boseman in mind. Of course, Chadwick hit his battle from cancer and passed away, which caused this whole thing to go through changes. Now, there are a lot of people that didn't like Wakanda forever because they go, oh, it's woke and it's the female leads and all that. I disagree completely because all of Black Panther's secondary characters in the first movie were female. And this go around, it's about them picking up the pieces and moving on. Not crazy about their choice for the new Black Panther, but this movie was pretty cool. It was a good tribute to Chad McBose when it was emotional when it needed to be emotional. And it carried the story further. Now, some of the things I think were forced in as far as setting things up for future Marvel Cinematic Universe movies, but I think they had to do that. But overall, I truly did like Wakanda Forever. Love the soundtrack. It's been on my playlist for a long time now since I heard it on the movies, and I think introducing Namor the Submariner was really cool as well. So Wakanda Forever comes in for me at number four. And at number three, uh, it was a good year for Brendan Fraser. He made it back from kind of being gone for a while and went through a lot and really showed that he's an incredible actor despite being in all the prosthetics. The Whale, uh, such a good movie, and it kind of is a mirror for a lot of what's going on in the world right now. A lot of us hide behind our computer screens, and it's been going in that direction for quite a while. Brendan Fraser's a professor who does just that. His class has never seen him because he's embarrassed about the fact that, well, He's got an eating disorder. He's a big guy, but it's an emotional ride for him to try to reconnect with his daughter. Uh, there's some seriously good, strong character moments in that movie, and you kind of see what he's going through, and you kind of wonder how many other people do that, hiding what they are on the inside because it's hell for them, so they put on a fake smile or a fake appearance or an avatar or a blank screen and try to get through life. But uh, The Whale, in for me at number three, I loved it quite a bit. Number two. The shirt says it all. Uh, when it comes to comic book movies, I wasn't sure how to take the Batman because I'm a big fan of Ben Affleck's version of the character. I think he looks like Bruce Wayne and the comic book character 
right off the page. Now, I'm not a Robert Pattinson hater because I understand what a good actor he is, and he's come a very long way from Edward Cullen in the Twilight Saga. And he pulled off the Batman pretty well. I was worried about how he would look as far as intimidation and physicality, and he did it well. Uh, there were some things that I didn't like. They took some liberties with some stuff and kind of got rid of some like core aspects of the character, but they also, in turn, brought him back to his detective roots and showed how smart he was. Not crazy about the new Batsuit, but I do like where they're going with it. I think Matt Reeves did a great job. I did like the twist on the Riddler, and I'm interested to see more in this movie universe. So uh, I thought it was a little bit longer than it needed to be, but overall, when it comes to comic book movies in 2022, the Batman, hands down the best one uh, for me, and it ranks at number two. Number one, uh, no surprises here. Movies are about going and having fun, forgetting about life for two or three hours for a while and just getting engrossed in it. And when you wait 30 years for a sequel, you hope it does just that. Top Gun Maverick absolutely delivered in every way possible. It was fun. Uh, you got to relive some of the fun that you had with the first movie. Tom Cruise is ageless. He still plays that role well. When you find out that most of those actors got in those planes and did a lot of those stunts, themselves, it makes it that much better. Do I think we need a third one? No, because I think this does a pretty good job of wrapping up the story. But from the moment it starts till the moment it ends, uh, Top Gun Maverick, so good. I saw it in XD IMAX at least three or four times. I've streamed it twice since it's been on streaming, and I just, I can't get enough of this movie. It's one of those things where, it's one of those where whenever I see it on, I will probably watch it because it's that good all the time. So number one for me for 2022, Top Gun Maverick. Uh, hopefully you've seen a lot of what's on this list. If not, check them out. They're all pretty good. If you've got your own list of favorites, hey, that's cool too. Uh, thanks for watching. Have a fantastic new year and a great 2023.